Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. Today is the eighth uh, lecture uh, we will be following. The title of the lecture is said as loads from a symmetric maneuver of an aircraft. What we will learn today is uh, what is maneuver is, but before uh, we go into details better to have some recapitulation. Recapitulation includes as we have already discussed history of solid mechanics or the structural analysis applicable to aerospace engineering, uh, different uh, sizes and uh, ways the structures are in different configuration in case of aircraft structures. Then uh, we have seen the development of aircraft structures uh, since the beginning by Wright brothers. Then uh, flight envelope and load factor for various status we have already learned. So, uh, today what we will learn is that uh, we will learn what uh, is a flight maneuver and we will learn symmetric flight maneuver along with that we will solve one problem to find out loads in that case. So, today's uh, lecture will cover symmetric maneuver loads from a symmetric maneuver equations we will we will form and then we will solve one example. <clears throat> Before we go into detail it is a time to have some understanding of symmetric maneuver. So, on the right hand side if you look at uh, this is an aircraft it is in pull out maneuver. Before we, uh, we look into the diagram on the right hand side better we, we, we read these bullets and along with that uh, we follow it. So, in a rapid in a rapid pull out from a dive a downward load is applied to the tail plane causing the aircraft to pitch nose upward. So, uh, what happens uh, if an aircraft if we draw this way I get better I remove things here. What it says that uh, causing aircraft, poor aircraft to pitch up to pitch nose upward. So, elevator is going upward if we look at the section this way this is the way this elevator comes in this is the tail plane and rapid pull out from a dive a downward load is applied to the tail plane. So, that applies the a downward load in the total tail plane and causing the aircraft to pitch nose upward that means, it is moving this way that is what the V diagram is shown this way that is what is explained in the first topic. So, next if we look at the downward load is achieved by backward movement of the control column. 
thereby applying negative thereby applying negative incidence to the elevator. So, that is what just now we have drawn, but control column moving backward this terminology is used uh, with respect to the pilot and control. Uh, what happens there is a control rod something like this and then that is moved this way. So, to give it a pitch up movement that is what is said here uh, achieved by backward movement of the control column, control column is moved back thereby applying negative incidence to the elevator, negative incidence to the elevator this way the elevator will move. and negative incidence to the elevator or horizontal trail if the latter is all moving. So, this is one case elevator is if it is not then the total tail plane moves like this in normal case it is like this, but for uh, pitching up movement it, it rotates this way. So, Next, if we talk about the maneuver is carried out rapidly, the forward speed of the aircraft remains practically constant. So, that increase in the lift and drag result from the increase in wing incidence only. So, it is a kind of assumption, this is a kind of uh, way we, we follow it that means, we assume the forward speed practically constant and we assume also that the lift and drag result from the increase in the wing incidence only. Since, the lift is now greater than the required greater than that required to balance the aircraft weight the aircraft experiences an upward acceleration normal to its flight path. So, the total aircraft moves upward that is what is said. Since, the lift is now greater than that required to balance the aircraft weight, the aircraft experiences an upward acceleration normal to its flight path. This normal acceleration combined with the aircraft speed in the dive results in the curved flight path shown in the figure. So, what is happening while it is coming down an aircraft is coming down then the pitch up movement is given and then it is following this way. Here only this portion is shown in this, this case how it is going on. So, if we look at the other parameters let us go to the next slide as the drag as the drag load builds up with an increase of incidence the forward speed of the aircraft falls since the thrust is assumed to remain constant during the maneuver. So, if the thrust is assumed constant the forward speed is definitely supposed to fall. So, that is what is stated it is usually it is usual as we observed in the discussion of the flight envelope to describe the maneuvers of an aircraft in terms of the maneuvering load factor n. So, we are supposed to find out the maneuvering load factor in terms of which it is generally talked about. Uh, the maneuver is of how much g uh, depending on that the design is carried out. For steady level flight n is equals to 1 this is simply to compare the n values giving 1 g flight although in fact the acceleration is 0. So, this is a very important understanding you may do there is no acceleration that is the reason it is saying that n is equals to 1 and it is giving 1 g. What is implied in this method of discussion is that the inertia force on the aircraft in the level flight condition is 1 times its weight. It follows that the vertical inertia from force on an aircraft carrying out an NG move maneuver is N w. We may therefore, replace the dynamic conditions of the accelerated motion 
by an equivalent set of static condition in which the applied loads are in equilibrium with the inertia forces. So, we, we have expressed in terms of n how does it act, how does it affect or affect the flight. So, that is what we say that dy the dynamic condition is replaced equivalent set of static condition. Thus, in figure n is the maneuver load factor while f is the similar factor, factor giving the horizontal inertia force. Here we see what the f comes this portion this is because of the maneuver in the vertical direction this is in the horizontal direction. Note that the actual normal acceleration in this particular case is n minus 1 please note that this is because while there is no state and level flight it is under 1 g, but while it is in n g maneuver actually the normal acceleration is n minus 1 g. For vertical equilibrium of the aircraft we have referring to figures where the aircraft is shown at the lowest point of the pull out. This is considered as the lowest point of the pull out if it is moving this way the figure is shown for this position. So, we are supposed to consider the static condition and we are supposed to find out the equation that is what is shown here. Before we go into the equation better we have some discussion on the drawing as we have already mentioned. If we look at uh, this is the aerodynamic center about which the moment is acting aerodynamic moment m 0 is acting thrust is acting along this line which is a at a distance c perpendicular distance c from the c g drag is acting along the a c in this for direction backward thrust is definitely acting in this line and the distance between the drag and the c g is b and f w is as, I, as I said what, what we have mentioned about the f w the horizontal inertia force that is acting in this direction. So, p is the lift acting on that uh, on the tail plane. So, with respect to that if we consider the vertical equilibrium equation vertical equilibrium equation is l p t l p t sin gamma uh, I think uh, there is a mismatch with the symbol here it is gamma here it is lambda please consider that gamma is equals to lambda otherwise again there will be some problem please consider this. So, let uh, L plus P plus T sin lambda is equals to this the sin thrust sin component acting vertical and then N w is acting downward. Now, for the horizontal equilibrium as we have seen the thrust cos component will come thrust cos component has come this is the uh, horizontal inertia force F w minus D drag is acting on the other equation. So, this is for vertical this is for horizontal equilibrium. Now, about taking the moment uh, and the pitching moment equilibrium about the aircraft C g is L into A. This is the distance this I missed from figure it is quite clear lift multiplied by A drag multiplied by B it is acting this way it is acting the other way T c T c is also acting in this direction rotation direction. So, this and this both are acting in this direction and m 0 is definitely in the same direction P l P multiplied by l lift is acting in and we get the moment equation. Here one thing point we should note that effect of pitching acceleration is assumed to be negligible. So, please note that we are not considering the pitching acceleration. This pitching accelerations are generally considered for other aspects other study for con control considerations, but here our consideration is not that 
uh, critical. So, we have neglected that point. So, with this understanding with a symmetric maneuver, now we understand what is a general symmetric maneuver is and in that general symmetric maneuver, what are the force components act? This is the flight path followed, it is at the bottom position of the uh, flight and what are the forces acting on it? Lift acting on the wing, P force acting on the tail plane, forward inertia force F w, uh, vertical inertia force N w is acting on it, thrust is acting with an angle lambda or gamma. So, with that consideration we have got three equations, this is the moment equation, moment equation, vertical and horizontal equation. Let us try to solve a problem and uh, try to see why, how we can find out the force components lift drag. Okay. How to solve? Method of successive approximation is most convenient for solution of these equations. Successive approximation we will follow, we will see how do we get one after another the values and uh, we will solve those. It may be noted that there are a few difference with respect to the steady level flight cases. So, that successive approximation method has some difference, it depends on what type of case, what how many data are available. Depending on that, we need to change the scheme of approximation. The engine thrust is no longer directly related to the drag as the latter changes during the maneuver. So, drag changes during the maneuver because of its because of its orientation at different position, the drag changes and uh, it is not directly related to the T. It, uh, at steady level flight, it is related to T, but whereas in this particular case, it is not related, it changes. Generally, the thrust is regarded as remaining constant and equal to the value appropriate to condition before the maneuver begin, began. So, with this understanding we consider the thrust and in some specific case we will also assume some other way. Let us see for a particular problem how do you solve, do we solve problem. This is one example, in this example this is C L, let us see what the example says. The curve C D alpha and C M C G, C D alpha C M C G for a light aircraft are shown in the figure. These three values are given with respect to C L. The aircraft weight is 8000 Newton, its wing area is 14.5 meter square and its mean chord is 1.35 meter. Determine the lift drag tail load and forward inertia force for a symmetric maneuver corresponding to n equals to 4.5, n equals to 4.5 is a maneuver required for that this type of symmetric maneuver and a speed of 60 meter per second. Assuming that engine of condition apply and that the air density is 1.223 kg per meter cube. So, for this particular problem, it is also specified that the engine is off, density is given, so we will use that. Relevant aircraft dimensions are shown in the separate figure. So, this is the figure for the relevant aircraft dimensions. In this uh, figure, uh, there is a small correction. Please note that this is the point sorry, on which it acts, not this point. So, keeping a note with that this uh, in the diagram, we will let us try to follow or solve the problem. The C g distance from the center of pressure of tail plane is 4.18 meter, uh, wing cord line is this one, the angle between the fuselage datum is 2 degree, this is the flight path, this is the angle alpha with wing cord and the fly flight path and we, we need to find the alpha from the diagram depending on some iterative process. This in angle is given and we let us see how can we find out the solution. So, before we go into the detailed solution, let us try to note the procedure followed. There are 
three equations vertical equilibrium, horizontal equilibrium and moment. We need to follow an iterative method, because uh, as we have seen in the last slide that uh, the alpha C M C G C D alpha and C M C G these are these are dependent on C L coefficient of lift. So, oh, with conforming value with respect to the C L we will have to consider these values and we will have to solve the problem. So, let us see first we will assume that in this particular case that p is equals to 0. And if we consider the first equation, if we use p equals to 0, t is stated to be 0. So, the equation boils down to L equals to n w. And then from the L equals to n w from the detailed expression of L that is q half rho v square C L into s, we will find out the value of C L and that will be our first value of C L. Now, using this first value of C L from the plot described in the previous page, we can find out the value of alpha as well as C M C G. And if we have the alpha and C M C G, this alpha will result in some L parameter, the length par calculation and as well as the C M C G will be used to find out uh, find out C L again, but before that we will we need the value of P. So, let us try to see what we can do. The moment equation may be approximated to find out P. Now, from the first equation using new value of P, we get the modified C L. So, let us see for this particular case how do you solve it first approximation as it is said we neglect the tail load p this is the first approximation as it is mentioned we use the equation we get l equals to n w as i mentioned it that l with its detail formula that is half rho v square c l s s is the wing area c l is the lift coefficient n omega equals to n omega so Following this equation, we get the value of C L n omega w value n is 4.5 and w is already given and uh, putting the other values as given 1.223 density of air, the speed and 14.5 is the wing area here was not there. So, so please note that S is there that value of S is equals to 14.5, yes it is 14.5 meter square. So, with that, that value of s, we, 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 we calculate the C L, the first as a uh, calculated value of C L. And now, using this C L value from this plot, say for 1.113 somewhere here, we, we drop and we find out the value of alpha corresponding to that. Alpha value we get uh, around 13.75, we get the C, C M C G. 0.75 CMCG is this is alpha, this is CMCG. So, these values we get and the tail arm L from first figure we need to find out is that L equals to 4.18 this this alpha is the new alpha we are supposed to we are supposed to put here. here again this is the point and this component is this component and this small component whatever is is this component. So, this is this component and this is this component. So, cos and sin part alpha by 2 all these two 0.31 that is the reason we have. We have the length uh, corresponding to the tail arm and using this, this equation let us see how do we. So, we have the value of L calculated that is L equals to 4.123 meter 
and from the moment equation if we look at we can consider that this is the total L A d B m 0 is equivalent to the aircraft pitching moment that is m c g and if we rewrite the equation in that form that is m c g minus p l equals to 0 and the detail expression or expression of m c g which consists of half rho v square a c c m c g where c is the wing wing mean chord. Now, substituting so from here we will get the value of p uh, and uh, that p value can be substituted from to the vertical equilibrium equation where initially we assumed p is equals to 0 and that uh, we have put here p is put divided by l this expression divided by l is put which is equals to n w t is 0 in our problem. Now, again to make it in the coefficient form we divide it by half rho v square s and we get the expression for C l which is equals to C l plus C the mean aerodynamic chord divided by L and then C m C g. This C m C g with respect to the C l uh, the previous C l value that is uh, the previous C l value was 1.113 with, with that value this value is the previous C l value we can we have got the C m C g value and uh, substituting those value we can have the new C, C L value. Note that the right hand side is nothing but the old C L value. This is uh, this is what is written here the old C L value 1.113 and this is this this portion is nothing but this one. So, we get a new value of C L. So, one iteration is done. So, this iteration we can repeat to get a refined value of C L. So, with this C L value with this new C L value from the plot we can find out again alpha we can again find uh, the value of C M C G and we with help of that alpha and C M C G we can find out the new modified L we can find out the new value this the, we can use this new C M C G value and we can have the new value of C L. So, that is what the iteration goes on. So, let us let us see in our next slide how the iteration takes place. So, in this we see the new value of C L will, will give alpha equals to 13.3 degrees C M C G is equals to 0 0.073 from the plot. Substituting these values of alpha into equation B gives a second approximation of L namely L equals to 4.141. This will modify the value of P and as we have described the new C L value we have equals to 1.099. Since the three calculated value of C L are all extremely close further approximation will not give values of C L very much different to those above. Therefore, we shall take C L equals to 1.099 and from the figure we calculate the value of C D that will give us the drag. Here it gives us the drag, the value of lift, tail load, uh, drag and forward inertia force then as follows. L is uh, calculated from the standard formula all these values are put tail load P is equals to N W minus L those values are put and we have found that it is equals to 1000 Newton. Drag is also put from the value half rho v square S C D and 2790 and the forward inertia force which is equals to the drag is, is 2790. So, uh, considering T is equals to 0. So, with this, this what we conclude that for a symmetric uh, general maneuver how the maneuver is, what are the forces act on that aircraft we have learned and we have a considering a standard plots how to solve a problem, how to find out lift, drag, tail plane load, uh, forward inertia force all those things we have uh, chalked out. So, references are standard references what we have followed in the previous slides. And at the conclusion slide, if we look, see a symmetric maneuver is, uh, is we have learned how a symmetric maneuver takes place, what are the condition. 
loads from symmetric maneuver we have uh, solved and with that we have got a fair understanding at different flight scenario flight maneuver how do we find out loads experienced by an aircraft. So, with this uh, slide we move to our end of today's lecture. Thank you for attending this lecture.